Jackson Wilkie. He is an EXP agent and he is the OG. You know, you guys, I've sent you guys another program and that there's another program that's a YouTube program. He's the originator, okay? He's the one that created it. This is where it all came from. So if you're following anyone, follow him. Okay. So Jackson, thank you so much for coming on. Thank Teach you. us what we got to do to do video. Well, how many of you out there, you guys can unmute chat box. I don't really care. Do you have YouTube channels right now uh, or not? Okay. So no's any yeses? Who has a YouTube channel? Raise your hand. Jessica Jackson. Okay. Okay. Jessica. Kyle has one. Kyle started one. Kyle's got and one. Kyle's been doing good. Perfect. Any any questions with it right out of the gate? Are you have you had any leads from it? And then what what style of videos? And feel free to unmute. I'll I'll, I'll go through and do some training. You guys are gonna have a good understanding of what to do. But I need to know my audience first. So yeah, and also make sure you guys put where you're coming in from. Okay, yeah. so we to send referrals and so, welcome Clinton. No, a lot of people no channels yet. Cool. Uh, let's see. Deidre has a channel. Kyle has a channel. Uh, let's see who else has a channel. A lot of these people, I coach them on this video, video, okay. video. So All I'm right. going to open up a channel. And then also we've been talking about their Google pages and then using that for their Google pages. So just so you know, we always talk about this. Perfect. Can you guys see this? Yep. Cool. You see me too, maybe, or all of us. Yep. All right. I'm going to run through. Um, what I like to do at the end of the day is I'm going to give you basically <clears throat> a marketing strategy um, that, that works for obviously YouTube is my thing and video, but basically I don't care what kind of marketing you're doing. If you want to generate inbound leads and, and, and not have to convert these people, then that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, I will talk a little bit about me, but here, here's some of the biggest questions. So I've coached agents for five, you know, four or five years now, thousands and thousands of them. And, and some of the biggest agents you've seen, even at EXP, the Kyle whistles of the world on mm -hmm. this YouTube stuff and, and changing their views of it. And the biggest issues that I come across typically when, when it comes to videos is, well, that the first one is the worst one, the views and the followers, the outward facing metrics. Um, that is typically all that we hear. I think it's one of the saddest things of the real estate industry is every marketing, you know, venue we go to, no matter what, it, it's typically focused on this. And I don't know, I see some nodding heads and stuff, but we are all so worried about the views and the followers. And I'm here to tell you right now, I've got 13 YouTube channels across the country. I've gone viral. You don't get paid from, from views and followers. It doesn't work. Like the most I've made with eight YouTube channels in the AdSense program, high producing channels is like maybe 800 to $1,200 a month, which seems pretty decent, but that's also eight channels that are over a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours watched. So going viral and, and getting the views and followers and just wanting that, right? We, especially with a lot of these Instagram trends these days, that is, you know, one of the biggest killers. And when you're not getting the views and followers that you see this one person get, that's what holds you back. The other part there is short form videos. I'm going to teach you why today I think short form video is something you shouldn't be focusing on. Uh, I think it's great if you want to do some daily stuff. And if you want to, I'll teach you what you need to be saying. Other thing is high look at me videos. I And, and all of this stuff, guys, is not me poo-pooing other people. I did this. And I'll tell you my story here in a little bit. Um, but I did for about 16 months, thousands of videos, uh, Facebook videos, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I did a ton of the high look at me videos. Hi, my name's Jackson Wilkie, your local real estate agent, right? We've all done it. We, we still do it to this day. And I'm going to teach you why those are bad videos here in a little bit. Again, I, I keep saying videos, right? I will focus on YouTube, but it's it's marketing strategy. The next thing is not answering the consumer's questions. And that is all of this stuff above is exactly why I don't like doing some of the shorter videos, the high look at me, because you're not answering consumer's questions. Consistency seems to be one of the biggest things. Uh, uh, you know, we And we feel in the real estate industry that we may need to be doing two, three videos every day to be consistent. It's not that. It can be weekly. But when we take those big dips, um, we can lose audiences. And then 
the other part is it sucks how long it takes to get results, right? We always want, you know, and that's why realtors pay so much money at Zillow and Facebook because we get that dopamine, but we get that lead today. But we all know, I mean, some of the best conversion rates for top, top, top teams with, with Facebook, you know, it's what, 1%. So you have to get thousands and thousands of these things and you have to be a killer to convert at one, 2%. So when we have to work really hard at long, you know, form organic content to uh, really get our own clients, you know, and the results don't come that day, we get frustrated with it. So some of the secrets we're going to talk about today is discovering videos for keyword research. They get thousands of searches and have zero competition, right? This is the big code that I cracked years ago. Um, number two was I was not being myself on camera. Anybody feel that? Like we, we see somebody else do a video and we got to like copy that. We have to be perfect. No mess ups. You guys wouldn't believe, you know, what I do now. In fact, most of my videos are, are a lot of mess ups and being, you know, almost comical and funny and, and, and attracting people that way. And three is, you know, I never told anybody to call me. So we're going to talk about this today. Um, your calls to action, right? We got to get them in there, but they can't be salesy. There's specific ways to do your calls to action. A little bit about me. My name is Jackson Wilkie. She did mention, you know, um, the original, uh, when you see a living in channel, any of you seen like a living in channel across the country, living in Dallas, living in Phoenix, I came up with that method. In fact, um, if you go to audible or even Amazon, you can see, I have a book. If you guys want to write it down, it's called the billion dollar channel method. I just released it, uh, and explains not only how, how I came up with this system, uh, but how, like I just mentioned there, the three big secrets is like how to be, discover yourself on camera, you know, how to really answer consumers questions. And I did a full audit, audible book. In fact, I reverse engineered it. The whole thing's audible. And then I had to get it written by somebody. So it's, it's really raw form. Uh, I have a partner, Jesse Dow, a business partner. We've done all this together. I talk about partner fights we had in there. So if you're, if you're growing and scaling your business, um, it, it'll really help you with that. I traveled the country. Once I discovered, it took me about 16 months, pain and misery, shooting all the videos, almost had to quit real estate. Um, I was doing all the shops, restaurant interviews, right? We've all heard that digital mayor style videos. I did them all. And, and to this day, I've, I've received zero leads from any of those, right? I didn't answer any consumers questions. So what I realized is people buying and selling real estate, they don't care about Johnny's taco shop, right? And the people that are watching that, well, they're just, you know, it's just for entertainment, right? And that's what a lot of content these days are, are about is entertainment. Finally, what I started, and, and I never take credit as the originator. What happened is there's a gal on the East Coast, Karen Carr, she was doing blog writing and she found by putting YouTube videos in the blogs, it ranked better. So she did some simple studio videos, but what she taught was a lot of like the escrow process and inspections. And I tried those videos and they sucked and I just couldn't. And what happened was I wasn't being myself. I had to script it. I'm the worst real estate agent ever. Like I, I just suck at it, but I'm really good at video. I remember I just, you telling that on, on stage at Sprint. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm the shittiest the realtor ever. Agent ever. <laughs> I'm the shitty. And it's just not my thing. Like, I just don't get that stuff, right? But um, thankfully, I had a business partner who's a killer, and he did. So at the beginning, I was shooting all these videos, right? Facebook, Instagram, putting them everywhere you could possibly think. Um, and, you know, it, 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 what happened was I finally started discovering that, hey, people are searching, and I'll show you here in a little bit, the, the search habits. People were searching my cities and suburbs in YouTube 10 to 15 times a month more in, in YouTube than they were Google. And that day I created the, the real estate vlog. So if you see these vlogs in these cities on YouTube, I, I developed that by months and months of, of struggles to figure out what my clients wanted. So then I traveled the country for about two years to 13 of the hottest markets creating YouTube channels. And today we've sold in the last three, three and a half years, about 475 homes from our YouTube channels. Um, and I don't even live in all these markets, obviously. And I moved from Idaho to Portland for a while. And now I live in Houston, Texas. So once you understand content marketing, guys, you can, you can really bring in a lot of business. And the beautiful part is I've only closed two of those deals. And I basically, Jesse did the whole thing for me. So Again, once you answer the consumer's questions and content market, now you've gained the trust. It doesn't have to be me closing the deals either. This is how we can scale and grow. So this is basically what I want to focus on today. Um, let's see if I can get this to go. 
All right, the, the the sales process. So this isn't my sales process, guys, but this is what you I want you to guys to take away from this whole thing today. And what I'll do is I'll open myself up for Q&A at the end of this. That's my favorite. But um, the sales process is the most important thing that you can understand about your business going forward. If you want to do TikTok videos or Instagram reels or whatever, then this is what you need to know. And again, this is not my sales process. So this is when people need to actually buy, sell real estate, right? Well, whenever anybody needs to buy anything, what's the first part of it, right? Problem recognition. So if I am, oh, oh my gosh, new job, I need to move to Houston, Texas, I've got a problem, right? That is, that's what it is. Hey, this car, it ain't working for, you know, showing all these homes, I, I need to find a new one, right? That's my problem. My vehicle is my problem. Or man, I, I'm getting busier in real estate, and my computer keeps crashing. Problem, right? So we all have these problems. Now, the first thing is when you're thinking about, dang, this computer sucks, or man, my car, what, what do we do, right? Do we go straight to TikTok or Instagram? No, we typically go right into information search. So what, what are you going to do? Best car for real estate, best car mileage, right? Best laptop for video editing, right? Best laptop for um, you know Excel spreadsheet. We start to do information search. This is what you do every day. This is what I do every day. If we actually want to go purchase, and I'm not talking about like, you know, when you're on Instagram and you forget Valentine's Day and there's a teddy bear with some chocolates and shit, like this is actual buying and selling, right? And when you think about real estate, it's the biggest asset, right? It's the biggest thing. And, and all of you real estate agents, including myself, we've sat in the rooms with these people. How many questions do they have, right? Tons tons of questions. So again, short form content, they're, they're not going to get a lot of those questions answered. So when you realize that people actually have a problem, and the first thing they do is they information search, then I would be building my business on platforms where you can actually go to those people, right? So when I talked about the big issues, a lot of times we don't answer the consumer's questions. We're just trying to find an Instagram real trend sound and, and put something out there. But when people have a problem, they're, they're going to a search engine typically. In fact, we've even leveraged Pinterest before. It's a search engine. It's got a search bar. We've leveraged podcasting before. It's got a search bar, right? We um, have a living in Portland, Oregon uh, uh, website. There's no IDX on it. We don't care about IDX. Like, to be honest, if I'm going to go search homes, I'm going to go to Zillow. It's the best platform, period. But where do I capture people, right? And, and the way you need to think about your marketing is, is a funnel. We always talk about funnels. Well, what's the most top of funnel, right? The problem. People are searching your city first and foremost, okay? And if we can capture them up there, I don't, in fact, I love Redfin and Zillow. I know every real estate agent, they, they bitch and moan about it and they're taking all these people. Well, then just beat them, right? You got to get above them. So when people actually reach out to us, they haven't even begun to think about a three bed, two bath house or a four bed house. They're trying to figure out where to live. And then when we tell them, Hey guys, you know what? Now that we know some of the areas, we can actually build you out a search with our own customizable technology. It's going to send you the most up-to-date information. You can heart that property and it starts to build out a search based on that. They're like, Oh my God, mind blown. And we're like, yeah, it's just our CRM that they give us at EXP, right? So top of funnel because information search. Okay. So what they do is they go and they seek information. Next, evaluation of alternatives. I get this every day. Jackson, I just got an email this morning. Hey, I want to take your YouTube masterclass, but I see there's a few agents in my market already doing it. Is it, should it even, is it even make sense for me to do this? Yeah. Yes. Right. And the, the thing that I've actually learned, I just launched YouTube 2.0, which is not for beginners. So don't, don't take it. It's for people who have aging channels. Um, but really a lot of new agents are coming through our training and they're going right into these markets and they're becoming the top dog they're starting to rank number one um right so people are searching these cities they have a problem they search the cities and here's these new agents because i like i'm a big sports junkie but like tiger woods came into golf 20 something years ago he was winning matches by 15 to 20 strokes he was working out every day as soon as soon as his uh you know round was over he's back at the range working in all of his competitions sitting in the bar drinking brewskis and smoking stogies right well he created a monster to where now Everybody in the field, 100 different players, they all work out. They all can drive the ball 375. And so his competition really built up. And I've been teaching this for five years. I created the living in method and I've created my own competition. So a lot of these agents, you guys sitting here today with no YouTube channel, if you actually do this correctly and, and do the right videos and you leverage keywords, 
you can have videos go right up there and start ranking and, and get leads pretty quickly from this. The beautiful part about evaluation of alternatives is what did I say that one of the biggest problem is we're, we're terrified to be ourselves on camera. So if you watch a lot of my videos lately, you're going to see me. I'm always in t-shirt shorts. I wear sunglasses because it's hotter than dog shit here in Houston. I got Jordans on, LeBron's. I'm always got my kids in the back, uh, you know, in the videos, whatever. And, and I learned by mistake, really, uh, or actually because I was so broke. In Portland, I, I wore a button-up shirt, slacks, and dress shoes in all my videos. And I hated it, man. I was always like moving in it. And I had my lines, guys. I had my scripts up there and I'm like reading them and I'm doing real estate numbers and I'm doing data. And I had to script that shit, right? And so what happens is when you script and you have to read all that, it's not coming genuinely from you. You mess up those lines a lot. And that's when we hate seeing ourselves on video. We are fearful to be ourselves on video, but I'm telling you, I've sold 475 homes being Jackson Wilkie. And it took me a long time to figure that out. So the evaluation of alternatives is that the 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 key to marketing is not really how smart you are and how much data and information you can give it's more answering the consumer's question and then being yourself so my niche avatar is really in that i mean i've sold to professional athletes lawyers doctors and and even jesus christ for that's serious this guy legally changed his name to jesus christ he has a youtube channel with millions of subscribers um but it it, it came down to them being just like me. And I got, I got wife, three kiddos. I've moved a lot. And actually the funniest part is I talk about that in all my YouTube videos that I am new here to Houston, or I am new here to Idaho, or I'm new here to Florida. And by saying that, which every real estate agent is so fearful, we need to know the market. We need to be a local forever. I now resonate with that person moving here and they want to work with me 10 times more than anybody else. So I've actually cracked the code by being myself and being somebody new that they can relate to. And I even say in my videos, I'm not a good real estate agent, but my partner here on the video, he's the best in the city. So I'm going to help you find the spot. But if you actually want to close on a house, like you want to use him, I, I can't get you in the house. They love that stuff. And they're like, oh my God, get me over to Joe, please. But they <laughs> still want to work with me. So my niche, um, you know, is just really that, that dad, three kids, uh, and, and being myself, sports junkie, you know, I got the basketball on the back and all my video. It's just kind of who I am. Purchase decision. This was so what happened was I started discovering this whole method, this living in method. And my channel name at the time, YouTube channel name was Jackson Wilkie. And then I changed it to Jackson Wilkie and Jesse Dow, the real agent now group. Like I changed my YouTube channel name to that. What happened was I started understanding and, and I was the first person to really start diving into analytics, click, click through rates, average view durations, and understanding the actual analytics and how videos perform. That's how they rank is by average view durations, click through rates. And I started noticing that when I would search stuff, because I was listening to all the digital marketers and the real estate agents, but they didn't have client getting YouTube channels. So they were making things up and it didn't work. But when I would go to real YouTubers and learn stuff, and I would search in the search bar, how to grow YouTube channel. Sometimes entire channels would rank for my keywords. And I was like, damn, that's cool. I wonder if I switched my channel name to living in Portland, Oregon, which is a massive keyword, if that would actually rank or help. I was actually told it was a bad idea from some people, but I did it. I changed it to living in Portland, Oregon. Okay. That is how the whole living in system was created is, is right there. And now I had all these people and I started doing the real estate vlogs of these cities and ranking number one for the terms but I'm the worst real estate agent ever. I can't sell shit and I can't close. I was not telling people to call me in these videos. So I'm sitting down one day, I actually have this recorded and I'm with the lender who's helping us and his boss. So the boss of the bank is sitting there and he's like, dude, you, and he was cool, dude. And he shot a lot of video. And he's like, your videos are like nothing I've ever seen. These vlogs, YouTube videos, dude, I've never seen that in my life. They're killer. How much business are you getting from it, Jackson? And I'm like, nothing. He's like, what do you mean? You have all these views and subscribers. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't know, but we don't really, I mean, we've had a couple kind of reach outs, but nothing really. He's like, are you telling anybody to call you in these videos? I'm like, hell no. Like you can't do that. That's salesy. Like people hate that. No, this is quote unquote, people are idiots, Jackson. You have to tell them what to do. He's <laughs> all, don't lead with it. But somewhere in that video, you need to tell people that you love working with them and to call you. 
And that is how my call to action came about where I started saying, hey, this is Jackson with the Real Agent Now Group right here in the Portland Metro. If this is your first time to this channel. Make sure you you know, subscribe. We're doing videos every single week about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play here. We get so many phone calls and emails every day from people moving and relocating here. We absolutely love it. So if you're thinking of moving here, make sure you give us a call. Shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, weekends, we get your back when moving to Portland. Next day, it was like 14 phone calls. The rest is history, right? Wow. So. We're going to do all this work to answer consumers' questions. They're going to go seek this information. Now they like me, but if you don't tell them the call, they won't. They will go find somebody else, right? So that's, again, this is the, the actual sales process. If you go look, there's multiple different renditions of the sales process, but it's basically this, right? And, and the, the best part about this kind of marketing, which is what I call content marketing, that's answering the consumer's question is you build that trust and, and it's all inbound. So conversion rates aren't 1%. It's basically 100% unless you let these leads fall through the crack and you're not following up with them. But other than that, they're calling you, right? So I just wanted to show you a couple examples here. This is TubeBuddy. This is a extension that you can put onto your computer. And what it does is it actually brings up keyword research. So the cost of living in Portland, Oregon. This is when I started discovering YouTube. I was doing the inspection process, escrow, right? That's all the videos they teach us to do. If you search that, zero searches. Nobody gives a shit about the escrow. And guess what? If they do, where's, where's that client at? They're in, in the middle of the buying process with another real estate agent. So I just, I don't get why I did it, but uh, why it's being taught still to this day. But what you can see there is the search volume. So anything in the green is, is really good. Look at the competition. There's really no competition, meaning the cost of living in Portland, Oregon. And, and back when I started this, there was no, no competition. There was nobody doing this video in Portland or, or any market across the country. So when I did this video, I was the first one. Now there's more agents doing it. So you have to make a better video. That's how you rank. But the optimization strength is the third one down. Now, what that is, is something that I discovered as well. I, when I started YouTube, um, was putting in the description box, my name, my email, my squeeze page, my landing page, my yada, yada, right? We're real estate agents. We have to squeeze the shit out of people and we got to convert them, right? Well, that's where all your keywords are supposed to go. Right now, there's no optimization. There's no videos out there with good optimization, meaning in my description, I need to be talking about in a couple paragraphs, living in Portland, Oregon, moving to Portland, Oregon, the cost of living in Portland, Oregon, and really write that in there so that YouTube and the analytics know, hey, this whole video is about cost of living in Portland, Oregon. So it's going to help rank it. That's some of the stuff that I started understanding. Now, if you look at the escrow process, Portland, look at the search volume. Like the arrow is almost off the page to the left. There's zero, right? And if you actually hit that results tab there, uh, in TubeBuddy, you go there, you will notice that the videos, they're going to have like 17 views, nine views, 30 views, 100 views, seven views, nine views. Some of those videos are three, five, eight years old, right? So it does not work for lead. It's not something that people are actually searching. Moving to Portland, Oregon, again, look at the amount of monthly search. And you might be like, well, it says it's, you know, right in the middle. It's not good. 21,000 searches a month. People are typing moving to Portland, Oregon right? That's insanity. You talk about leads, like we're generating with our Houston channel right now, anywhere from 200 to 300. Oh my God, are you the real Jackson? Is this their, oh my God, we're moving to Houston. Can you please help us buy a house? We're getting 200 to 300 of those a month. Okay. Beaverton, Oregon. Again, this is actually pulled from keywords everywhere. Another search tool. Don't use it. Um, this gets taught by some people, but this is actually pulling words from Google. So if you want to be a blog writer, you can leverage, you know, keywords everywhere. Um, but you can see right there that the search volume for Beaverton, Oregon is 40,000 searches a month, right? That's pretty cool. Look at, this is again, TubeBuddy. This pulls its data from YouTube, not Google. 373,000 searches a month. So you have 10 times you have people searching in YouTube 10 times more a month, Beaverton, Oregon, than they do in Google. What does that tell you? They, they're, they're wanting to see it, right? Okay. If 373,000 searches are going into YouTube a month, that means they're wanting to see it. That was the aha moment. Again, this is how I created the real estate vlog. We went out, started shooting videos about Beaverton, Oregon, and what it was like to work, eat, sleep, live, play with a camera in our hand. That's how it really works, okay? 
Secret two, be yourself. Again, you got to figure out, I kind of went into this, so I won't go too deep and, and we can open it up to Q&A here in a second, but you really have to find your niche. And I'm not going to say it's going to happen video one. Like the, the reason I started figuring out who I was on camera was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos late, later. And at the time I was so broke, um, living in new to Portland. I didn't know anybody. I wasn't closing any homes and I'm shooting all these videos and videos and videos and videos. And here comes the summer. I, I couldn't, you know, my kids were out of school, didn't have daycare options. So there they are in the back of the car. Right. So I started actually putting my kids in the intros. Cool. My, my daughter's like th two or three. She's got her little stuffy and she like goes up to the camera. She's like, eh. so I like did that. And then I edited it to like, it reversed it to some music. And I just was like, man, I got to throw them in there. I had a little part where we were throwing rocks in a can or something. It blew up guys. Every, and here's the truest story. I can't, I can't even make this up back when I was actually touring clients, right? I pull up to this, they were staying at a hotel in, in Beaverton and I was going to show them from home again, broke. I had to take my son with me. I was able, my, my daughter at the time, um, I think we got her into a daycare or something that day, but my son was like five. He's in like all the early Portland videos and uh, he's in the back of my truck and I pull up to the hotel. I don't even know what these people look like, right? They've all seen me, but I haven't seen them. So I'm getting this like, oh my God, it's you Jackson. And I'm like, there they are. They come up to my truck, they get in and they stare at my son, Hank. And they're like, it's Hank. It's Hank the Tank. What's up, big Hank? And he's like, dad, who are these people? What the hell's going on? Look, they, they get in. They're like, oh my God, Jackson, we love that you had kids and showed it. Look, at here's our daughter. Here's our yada yada. We're moving here. $600,000 budget. We're closing it up, right? I'm the worst real estate agent of all time. I can't close. Jesse closed it. They didn't care. They were like, they couldn't believe it was me on video. Now here's my son, right? So it took me a long time to, and I'm not saying you got to stuff your kids in every video, but when I do these videos talking about things here in Houston, Texas, I always talk about the truth, right? My competition will say it's hot here, but it's only for a month or two. I'm like, gee, man, hey, Chris, have you ever been to Houston? It's like cooking a pizza at 425 degrees in the oven. When you open that oven and that shit hits you in the face, that's how hot it is. It's absolutely brutal. If you don't like the heat, do not even think about moving to Houston, Texas. But I come from North Idaho, literally six months of snow. I've sledded off my roof. I am tired of the snow because it doesn't go away till like June. It's dark at like three. I love the winters here. So I'll just suffer for a couple months in the, in the summertime, but I got a pool. But I'm just telling you the truth right now. If you don't like the heat, don't move here, right? It is that honesty. And guess what? I have all these northerners moving down. I'm so tired of the snow too. I can't wait to get to Texas. So when I actually do my videos about Idaho, I, I put that hat on. Look, I'm telling you right now, if you don't like snow, don't move here. But, you you know, we go snowmobiling, we go ice fishing. The winter months, that's where we can go snowmobiling, you know, head out into the woods. So I paint that picture instead of saying it only snows a little bit. I exaggerate it. And guess what? Oh, my God, I cannot wait to get four seasons. I am so tired of the heat here in Arizona, or I'm so tired of 75 degrees every day in California. I want to wear a freaking hoodie. I want rain. I want to make snow angels. I get what people want. And so that is one thing that we have to realize is just being yourself is what attracts people. So this is somebody that I actually helped. He tried to go my method, which is family relocation. He sucked at it. He was terrible. But he knows every single thing about land and ranch in Texas. I'm talking down to the soils in different counties, the, the mineral rights. This dude knows it. He sells massive multi-million dollar ranches and he barely does a video every few months, but he's the only one doing it. And the dude knows everything about it. In fact, I got to go stay at one of these ranches he's selling for like 4 million and the promotional videos, me and the kids selling that, that ranch lifestyle. It's, it was a cool one, but yeah, he's just, he, he, he niched into the land and ranch, right? Um, the script, right? So I'm going to go through this. Actually, I can exit out of here and you guys can just see me. Um, because it, it's it's kind of evolved, right? What happens is we get um I hate saying script because it's it means that you guys need to put up a teleprompter and read it. But what you need to do, right? Problem recognition. So that means I don't care if it's a TikTok video, Instagram reel, a blog, a podcast, whatever, stop opening that video saying who you are. Nobody cares about that. That doesn't answer anybody's questions. What's the big thing right now, guys? Interest rates, probably. Are you right? That, that's how I'd open up every video. Are you terrified about the real estate industry right now? What are your biggest worries about 
you know, these interest rates. That's what I'm going to be answering today. In fact, I had three clients in the last month that actually sold their house, got into new. I'm going to talk about those stories. If you're thinking about even selling a house, you know, you're going to want to watch this video. I don't care if that goes to five people, guys. Those five people now are hooked. They're hooked because that is the exact thing. When we open a video and we just say who we are and I'm the top this and I'm the best that, you're just a greasy real estate agent. You're just like everyone else, right? That's why we never generate any business from our videos is because it's typically about us or Johnny's Taco Shop, right? But I would be answering these consumers' questions daily. So what you have to do is a problem-solving hook. Figure out what, and what I think you should do is if you got Facebook, you got Instagrams, post on there today and go, what are the top five things you're most scared about in this real estate market? And if you're too scared to comment, will you message me what your biggest worry is? I want to do a video series answering these, okay? And I don't get it. It's so funny. And I did this too. Like, why does real estate agent, why is the real estate market so messed up, man? Like our whole thing right now, if you go into Instagram Reels is what? Like rapping, uh, all the memes where we make fun of clients. Like, oh, my client thought they could afford a house and this is what they get into the dog house. And, and trending sounds, right? And guess what? If you actually go to those videos, any of them that blow up or those posts, look at the comment section. It's all real estate agents. Oh my God, so true. Oh my God, so true. Oh, copying. Oh, using. Our clients are like, what the, f you know, you're just making fun of me. Do you think doctors, lawyers, do you think they sit there on their social media or anywhere and they just make fun of their client? Oh God, I had this guy and he had heart issues. What a loser. You know, it's like, Hey, if you got pain, you know, in your low back, it's probably caused from these five things, you know, and we can help you fix it. So personal trainers, lawyers, they all got the marketing figured out, but real estate agents, we're over here just making fun of our clients. So I'm telling you right now, if you start getting honest, brutally freaking honest with your Instagram reels, your TikTok, and especially with YouTube and be like, yeah, this is a, I don't know if it's the most optimal time to be buying, selling real estate, but guess what? I'm the real estate doctor. And what I do is I take your questions and your promise or your problems and I answer them, right? I had eight calls last week with people who were thinking about buying and selling in this crazy ass market. And guess what? I told six of those eight, it's not a good time to do it. I'm not sitting here trying to make you do anything, but I'm your real estate doctor. You call me 24 seven. I can literally answer any question. I love real estate and I love when my clients reach out. So that's exactly what our doctors and everybody say, right? And, and I think by saying that every day, now people are going to ask you the, the hard questions, right? But when we talk about the truths of what's going on in this market, they trust us more, okay? When we hide behind, well, the interest rates were 18% in the 80s, I don't give a shit. I wasn't even born then. Like, that doesn't help me. I want today's stuff, you know? So that's what we have to realize is that we, the more honest we are in these videos and the more we hook them out of the gate and really fill them in with information and tell them we love when when people call us, that's how you're going to get way more reach outs with, um, with your marketing. So- I just want to take a little bit of time. I don't know if this is scheduled for an hour or what, but what kind of questions come up? Um, what does that, you know, what does that do to you guys? How, how does that help you with your marketing? Anything you guys got? Okay, I have a really quick question here. What kind of camera are you using? You look like a model. <laughs> like, like your picture I know. is Hold so on. clear right now. I'm like, I need that. <laughs> Graduated process, okay? Everybody goes, Jackson, you're this techie guy. Like you, you, you just get it because you're tech. I was, I grew up in North Idaho, played college sports, grew up working on a ranch, throwing hay bales and logging, logging. And I was a journeyman lineman working power lines for 10 years. And I never had social media. I moved to Portland, Oregon, because I was so tired of being a union worker. I became a sales rep for escrow. If you listen to my book, I, I highly recommend the billion dollar channel method, you will hear my exact story. You know what I what happened? And I'll get to your question. Every day I'm sitting there trying to learn social media. I didn't even have it. It was like foreign language to me. And I'm like, this is what agents want. They want social media, social media. Well, the what I started hearing from every real estate agent was, I know I need to be doing video. This is back in like 2017. Video wasn't new then either, right? I need to be doing video. I need to be doing video. So I bought a $200 MacBook off of eBay and I was broke, like broke, broke. And I started shooting videos myself and editing them to help real estate agents shoot video. And then I would tell them, hey, I'll even shoot your videos for you and I'll edit them. They wouldn't show up. My business partner, Jesse, he did. That's how the whole video thing started. I started with my phone 
which back in the day, it was like an iPhone, probably like five or six. And they weren't, I mean, they had a lens, but it wasn't wide angle. It was very shaky. So I went and got a GoPro Hero 7 Black. And here it is right here. And if you look at the Channel Junkie logo on any of my marketing, in fact, here's my, uh, it's funny because here's my my thing. Um, this goes into, here's my uh, logo. And there's kind of the script or the script, but you can see like my little guy over there. That's my cartoony. So before vlogging was even a thing, telling you, um, I went and got a GoPro because my biggest problems with video was one, my camera phone would die. Two, it was very shaky. Um, and three, it wasn't wide angle. Now the phones these days, they got incredible lenses. They're wide angle. And you can go get a $99 uh, gimbal. And, and you can make uh, some of my latest vlogs in Houston, which are like, you know, are massive, were with a phone. The biggest issues I run into today with my phone, um, if I ever need to get on it, I hate how I have to like undo everything. Uh, the audio you know, you got to hook up stuff to it. And, and second of all, it just drains my battery. So it's just, and then I got all these clips on my phone. So what I did is I, I went and I got a um, GoPro Hero 7 Black. That was the very first GoPro that had built-in stabilization, right? If you go and look at GoPro vlog kits now, there's 8 million things you can do with them. So I do enjoy a GoPro. I don't use them anymore. I use a Sony camera. I then, you know, over years and years and thousands okay, and thousands so and thousands. Don't go get bro, GoPro, get a Sony. <laughs> this is a Sony right here. Okay, this is a Sony ZV-E10. And that's actually what I vlog with too. On my my recent, all my Houston videos, you'll notice that a Sony camera. And then I use a, a like a gimbal, a DJ or a, a either DJI gimbal or like a Zion gimbal. And the best thing that I will recommend, uh, hold on. So basically you're filming this Zoom video on your Sony camera that you yep. also use outside and outdoors and stuff. Yeah, I just hook it straight up to the computer and leverage it. Um, and this is my exact, I could turn on another camera. I've got three camera angles in here. So I can actually, and then I will, again, I don't want to go too far, but I have a switcher board in front of me to where obviously I just turn myself off. But see, I can now I can actually record the screen. I can bring myself up. Um, I have other camera angles, so I can kind of go wherever with this, but this is my job now. I mean, I have 13 channels and I've shot thousands of videos. And so I've progressed to this, but when I'm out in the field, I, I, I was using basically a GoPro up until a couple months ago. Um, and now I've gone to a Sony camera, but the one investment I made was these, um, it's a DJI, see if it auto focuses there. It might not. Anyways, DJI microphones, right. these are wireless. They hook up to either a cell phone. There, there it caught. I have two receivers because I shoot with my business partner, Joe. So I put one on and he puts one on. And then that receiver right there can hook straight to my phone or straight to a camera. And it's the best audio you can get. And, and I, I love that. So if you want to shoot with your phone, you can do that. GoPros, um, Sony cameras. What's the and cost of um, just ballpark? The Sony and then the DJI. Uh, the Sony ZV-E10 right now is probably 600 bucks, I'd imagine. And okay. I think the cheaper one is about four, 500 bucks. It's the ZV-1. That is Sony's vlog camera. And I've heard amazing. I went to Sony. I have a really expensive Canon camera and it's sitting in my closet over there. I don't even use it. Um, Sony was meant for video and I love their video quality. Um, so the ZV-1, I, again, I'm not a techie dude. I, I don't know really anything about this stuff. I just kind of buy it as i go bare minimum everything that works together what about the dgi mic that i believe with the two receivers is going to be about 300 bucks 300 and the gimbals between 100 to 200 it just depends right. on which one if you're getting one for your cell phone they have one a dji one that's like 90 something bucks if you want the big crane model for like a sony camera they're usually anywhere from 200 to 400 depending on the model you get but again this is what you evolved to, you guys, right? If you have the investment, do it. But just like he said, our phones are amazing right now. Um, I started vlogging with, I bought the iPhone 14 just for the lens. And man, especially on that portrait mode, or not portrait, the uh, whatever it's called, the, the video mode. It's insane. Um, cinematic. Because that actually kind of blurs out the background. 
So especially if you're doing like studio videos, you can really control. And at the end of the day, guys, the, the camera really like you can go buy the most expensive cameras and you're seeing this clarity right here. I mean, it's a five, six hundred dollar camera, but I have my lighting is on point. Like I have a, a soft box light up here and, and I control the lighting in the back. That was my big issues at the beginning uh, was a lot of light behind me so and i'm just picking on is dd Dee Dee. you can see her she has all that light pouring in from the from behind her and nothing in front so that is why the grain of the um camera or why why it looks a little grainier with cheap cameras or 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 um computer cameras that light in the back is is hogging everything up so if you kind of darken the room um and then have the brighter light like if i turn this light off it's almost going to be pitch black in here so lighting plays huge and you'll notice when i'm out vlogging even though if it's sunny not whatever the first thing i do is i get outside i look and i look straight up where's that sun at because i want the sun hitting me in the face what we tend to do is we're going to turn and get it to because we don't want to look at the sun so we put it behind us now you have all that light coming down and it makes you darker so especially with the gopros and stuff so you'll always find me i'm, I'm going to have that sun kind of hit me on the side of the face or straight on so Martin asked, what computer software and editing do you use do you <clears throat> yourself? Do you, do you, uh, yeah, I use the best editing platform for both windows. If you have Mac, iMovie is amazing, um, to start it's free. And I edited a lot of my first videos with that. If you want something a little bit better, um, and it's for both Mac and PC is, uh, Filmora. And I actually have a course on exactly how to do it in our channel junkie university. Um, and I mean, how to do actual real estate vlogs, how to add music, how to add B roll, how to add clips. And that, that, that whole real estate vlog is what I created. So I, I actually do a whole video in there and I edit it, um, and, and teach you how to use it. But when, uh, it's like window share, I don't even know. I just call it Filmora, but wonder share Filmora. That is amazing. And the cool part about it is, um, it's only like 50 bucks. And then you actually get memberships to um, a couple different programs in there for ton, th thousands of stock B-roll, stock clips, stock music, that kind of stuff. Um, what other questions, you guys? Um, here's a question I have. So like you said, you didn't live in these towns, right? So some of us are new to towns and we're not experts to, uh, in these towns. So you don't have to be licensed in these towns to talk about the towns, right? So there's not going to be any compliance issues, correct? Talk to correct. us about that because a lot of people are worried about that. Okay. I don't. So in it, it depends. A couple of the states I'm licensed. So I have a couple channels in Idaho, Oregon, and then um, so I'm licensed in those states. But I don't talk about real estate and numbers, right? I talk about the areas. So when you go to like your city, you're actually going to notice a lot of people who have um, YouTube channels about living in, in Houston, right? And they're not real estate, but they don't, they're not doing it for real estate lead gen. They're just doing it for their own personal use, right? So I, you know, for the, like, especially for the Houston channel, which is my biggest, it says in my description, Jackson Wilkie is a non-licensed real estate agent. He is the VP of marketing. They that number so and and I've actually gone through compliance two different times um, with the state board of not only tech but Idaho and with NAR and they've deemed it okay by actually saying I'm VP of marketing and those numbers and those email addresses they actually go directly to the team they don't go to me so I don't talk real estate I don't answer the clients calls nothing I'm just shooting videos about what it's like to to live here. So you're not, so when somebody calls and it goes to a phone number, it's not you answering them. You have your team. Never. Nope. And the no, people yeah, that no, never. Real estate, the, the people that answer have to be real estate agents. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And so my teammates across the, the country are all licensed real estate agents and, and they love it. I mean, they get, they get the best lead on planet earth. Um, talk to me a little bit about that. So you're with EXP, right? And yep. we're always talking about attraction. I think I watched a couple of your videos. Um, by doing videos like this, you've attracted agents because they want to be like you, right? So can you talk to us just a minute about attraction, how this has helped your business? Right. Again, it, it all boils down. In fact, um, here's my Houston channel, just so you guys can see it. This is the style of videos. You can see I go long, 25 minutes, 18, 30, 18. Um, you can see these videos. I mean, they they blow up. 
you know, tens of thousands. And again, I don't sell views and metrics, but we're, I mean, we're, we're getting hundreds and hundreds of leads, um, you know, closing tens of millions a month from, from, from these videos. So these are the style of videos lately that I'm doing. You can see it's kind of, there's the same camera I'm on right there, but I actually go back and forth. I go out in the community um, and then I'm in the studio. So I kind of do this back and forth stuff. Um, so what I can do, yeah, you can see I have channel junkies. This is where I teach YouTube for real estate. Um, in fact, I just launched this video, but I have videos in here about what it's like to be at eXp, what you get joining exp and my downline and yes i mean we have i think 400 in our organization and, we, and me and my business partner split every single penny so a dollar comes in we both get 50 cents of it that's how we, no matter where the money comes from so um he we, we built his downline first he has about 80 frontline agents and 45 frontline qualifiers and i have now about 20, 30 frontline agents and i have 12 frontline qualifiers so we're trying to get me to 40 now um, and we've done it all with this channel. And then he built, uh, this is an actual search term, cloud-based real estate brokerage. You're not allowed to call your channel. Um, you're not allowed to call your channel, um, EXP. You can't actually do that, but here he ranks, you know, cloud-based. This is my business partner right here. So 156 videos, and it's only showing 56 because he enlisted a bunch of them. Um, but he is hardcore real estate. He knows everything about eXp. He knows everything about scaling and growing businesses. And so all of his videos, right, um, you know, is how to grow your, your team. But a lot of it's just all about, you know, how eXp Realty is separating itself, you know, why agents leave eXp. He goes through it. He explains eXp rev share, all that stuff. So we've been able to attract um, our total organization, I think is nearing about 500. I love that. But aside from these channels, your living in channels have yep. also attracted agents that want to kind of know, right? And be like you, right? You, you weren't doing these attraction. Well, yeah. So I have all these living. In, I taught, I, I've created the living in method and the original YouTube for real estate masterclass. It's been ripped off one of my own students. Um, but they want that. Right. And not only do they want the course, they also want me. So I don't like, you can't really pay me to coach if you're outside of the, like, Hey Jackson, I just want your, your coaching. I don't really do that. I save all of it for my EXP downline. We all know the revenue share model is the most powerful thing in the world. So the more we can get our agents to close, the more money we make. So we do weekly coaching calls with our downline and it's not just YouTube. It's, it's really how to scale grow. We have, you know, 17 VAs. We, me and Jesse are both hundred percent out of this business and I've been licensed not even five years. He's been about five or six, six years. So we, we, you know, we're, we're teaching real estate business, um, obviously a lot of marketing YouTube stuff and they get all of my courses trainings for free. So the best way to, to grow at, at eXp is to, learn what you're good at, really be able, to, if you can excel at something. And even if it's just being a new agent and getting your first deal, do you know how freaking relatable that is? Because there's tens of thousands of agents still trying to get their first deal. And yet in our minds, we're like, we need to be the freaking, you know, Chuck Fazio out there and done a billion in production. And now, like, I always give the example, I'm getting into real estate investing right now. And I, I've done my first two and I'm kind of getting my ass kicked. And so, when I search, I'm con I have a problem, right? I want to learn how to get better at investing. So what do I do? I have lived the last 18 months on YouTube, watching everything I freaking can, reading books, taking courses. I don't go to TikTok and learn how to invest in seven seconds, right? But when I see somebody pop on the video and it sounds like this, I'm standing in front of this 500 unit you know, apartment complex. And I just got this thing for 40 million and I can make you a millionaire. Who's that? Right. That's 10 X boy. That's old Grant Cardone. I'm like, I, heard oh, I don't know. But when this person gets on and goes, Hey, you know, I have a W2 job and um, I, I wanted to start getting into real estate investing. I did my first investment on this property and I lost 10,000 bucks. And I'm going to teach you how to avoid that. I'm like, Oh, right. This is my dude. Right. We, again, what did I say? The number one important thing is niching, right? You have to understand who you are. So if you're an agent who's closed your first three deals and you've done it rather quickly, or even if it took you a while, that's an incredible story. 
how to get your first three deals in real estate, right? I, I don't care. I don't want you to start talking about how to be a millionaire in real estate and you ain't done it. You ain't got no stories. You, you haven't gotten your ass kicked that way, right? You've gotten your ass kicked trying to get three deals and that's where you start your momentum. So um, you really got to just focus in on, on who you are and, and attract your niche people. And that's what I do. There's a lot of people that don't like me that don't want, because I, I mean, I, I'm a, a organic video guy. I, I hate leads. I, I can't convert them. I hate open houses. I hate cold calling. I can't physically do it. Like I just can't do it. So um, a lot of people think I'm full of it. Whatever. I don't want to work with them. But then there's all these other agents over here like, wow, I really want inbound leads and I, I can't cold call either. And I struggled. And I tell them, man, I, I went 18 months without any deals. Like I sucked at real estate, you know? I love that. Um, okay, bless, I think Blessing, did you have a question? I did, thank you. Um, hi, Jackson. Um, when you're talking about being new to an area and we're mm -hmm. starting this channel, like what content would you recommend or what have you seen as the best way to start to even get to explore you know, where we are and show that to hopefully our new audience? Is, is this your story? This is my story. <laughs> okay, where, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm originally from Chicago and I moved to the Bay Area in the middle of the pandemic three years ago. And it's just been like still still quarantined. Everyone's still kind of keep your head down. And it's just so vast that even where I live, it's still very awkward to, you know, get out and explore and say living in the Bay Area when yep. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the East Bay. I'm in the East East Bay. So technically, like I'm Oak not town. in bay but i'm even I'm east of oakland <laughs> okay so like the bay from what i know is that san francisco oakland kind of corridor and i'm just east of that so trying to figure out how why did I you choose that area i um speaking of investing was listening to bigger pockets yep and there was an episode where um, one of the co-hosts said that they were looking for someone to basically run their team operations, all of that, which is my strength. Heard it. I was moved. I Instagram DM'd him and had an interview and got the job. I thought this was LA Brentwood. So my whole life of like glam, glam was right there. And then you said Contra Costa County. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but I'm sold on the opportunity. I got off of Highway 4 and saw a cow in the road and figured out that I was sorely mistaken. But my kid is thriving. I love the area. The people are great. And it's just been a whole new world for me, despite my dreams of living or shopping on Rodeo every day. That's awesome. It, like where you're at, is there a couple, three, four areas that now you see and you're like, dude, these are these are really nice areas or, or I, I could definitely live there. Yeah, there's a couple. And she lives where Krista Mayshore lives. Nice. Well, you can kick her butt. So what you just did right there is you, you told your story. Like, if I'm moving to the Bay Area right there and you don't really know the areas and and hearing you, now I know you have a kid. Boom, we relate. Okay, I got, I'm got i bringing kids. Okay. And and my kid's thriving, right? Th this is what you do. And actually, I always say the people that are new to an area, you have all the advantages. I've coached thousands of real estate agents. When I get local people... They have nothing to say. They only like the area they live in. They hate everything else and they do not want to go anywhere. And so they, they can't, they can't like figure out how to tell stories. And I'm like, you got to tell stories about this area. Like how, I don't even know what to say. You're full of stories right now. You, I mean, you have gone down some of these roads, the cow on the road thing. I would be saying that in every freaking video. Like you think you know, you're coming to the Bay area. I got freaking cows in my road, you know, and I come from Chicago, you know what I mean? So now you're Chicago. So anybody coming from Chicago is calling your app. Like they, you, that is your person Two, You got kiddos three. You were shocked. That's what I do in these videos. So like a good video you can watch is, um, one of the recent ones I've done is like 15 reasons to avoid moving to Houston, Texas. <laughs> and I talk about like all the just most random shit that happens here in tech. Like Texas is its own country, right? I even talk about the service industry, how like weird it is. I talk about these crazy and I show it. I'm like out in my garage. I'm not scared. All these spider webs and bugs, like within a month, you clean it all. It's back. I don't know if there's any Texans in here, but like, man, yeah, you got one raising her hand down. I got snakes in my backyard. It's hot. 
I love it. And I paint this story, right? But I'm going to get to my point. I talk about how like all the water heaters are all up in the attic, but it's 140 degrees and they leak and they come to like, what in the hell, right? I talk about, um, I actually get my wife on there. I'm like, will you tell these women some stuff? She goes, okay, ladies, do not put any perishables or anything in your car because everything melts. Like, do not put, the, you know, she's like, and the mosquitoes, I apparently have typo blood, something about me, I get you know, just nailed all the time. And I found out these thermocells, you can put out thermocells and it really helps to keep the mosquitoes away. If you're going to any sporting event with kids, make sure you got a pop-up tent. Like you go to a sporting event in Texas, everybody's got their own tent, their carts and shit. We pull up there with nothing. We're like, all right, we're used to Idaho. Usually I got to bring my, my snow boots, right? <clears throat> I, I do this, right? And then at the end I say, but I love Texas. Like I'm telling you right now, we had a chance to live anywhere we want. We moved here one time back in 09, 10, 11. And the people that we met here, I'm telling you, I lived through the, the storm, the, the freeze two years ago and it killed people. It, and I did a video. So I'm like, it was terrible. I, I grew up in Idaho. Like that wasn't even cold. I was out my t-shirt and that shit, but it was really bad for Texas. And guess what? I had every freaking neighbor banging on my door to see if we're okay. Cause they knew we had kids. I had every neighbor on the on the Facebook group saying, hey, I don't care who you are. If you got babies, get into my house. I got a gen. I'm like getting choked up that like the Texas people is why I moved here. Right. The affordability. So I'm like, if you don't like those things, like just avoid them. But here's what you need to know. And I talk about storm shades on my windows, these black things you can put on your windows that cuts down the heat. Right. I talk about all these things that every Texan takes for granted. Right. I always say the locals, they don't know what to say. But here I am figuring out about, you know, in the property taxes, my God, I'm getting my ass handed to me. So I'm doing videos on property taxes because they're just eating me alive and how I'm actually finding companies that fight them for you and how you can file for homestead exemption and, and drop these a little bit. There's no local text and talking about that stuff. And so I'm very long winded in my answers, blessing, but that's what it is, right? Everything, every little thing that is different compared to Chicago, every little thing that's catching up, every little area that reminds you of a different area those are these stories. And that, that's why I always dominate in these markets is because I come across as like, you know, I have these great stories and I can really explain things in a way that is not local knowledge. And it just resonates with people. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your whole response. But it's a lot of reps. Yep. It is a lot of response. But the thing that was really nice about the way that you answered that wasn't scripted, wasn't like you just kind of had like talking points. That was you talking off cuff. And I would... Yep. I would listen to that video over and over again. So that was and they do. <laughs> and that's why I, I rank. It's all watch time. But I've learned that, right? The stories, the examples, the B-roll that I throw in there. And I'm, I'm a I'm an analytic. I, I discovered this whole process and, and I've created millionaires. And it's not this random thing that just works for a couple of people. I know analytics and data of YouTube channels better than any human alive. And it's because I live in them every day to make the best video period for a keyword. So if it's going to be, you know, the Woodlands, Texas, I'm going to go try and make the greatest single video period that keeps the people's attention the longest for that keyword. And that's how, how you rank. Right. And ah, I love that. Yep. So would it, would it not be good if I said, don't move to Colorado if you're a single midlife woman and you don't like beards? Because every man here has a beard. <laughs> Do it. Oh my God. Yes. Right. And that is a thing. Okay. Be like, I I didn't, a... like when you move to Colorado, you need a jacket and apparently you need a beard, but uh, like, it would just be funny, you know, and, and you're going to get the, the, the hate from the locals or whatever. I, you know, you don't care, but you will. Oh my God. People will eat that up, but that's your story. Right. <laughs> so here's the, here's the thing. Real estate agents, right. You're, you're going to go Tanya. You're going to be like, yep. Okay. The market here in Boulder is $353,419 average. And then you got this and that data, 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 data. If I'm moving my family to Boulder, I could give two shits about what the average price is. I need to know where the hell to live, what area fits me. And most importantly, I need somebody that I know, like, and trust. And if you start talking about these things that really resonate with me, I'm going to call you, right? Especially if you tell me. So data, facts, information, all that does is make you script. It makes you sound, sound unauthentic. Nobody watches it. And those videos don't rank. The stories, the, I, I go into all these master plan communities of Houston all the time. And I always say, it's my first time here, right? I don't act like the professional. I don't act like I've been there. I go, oh my God, I love this. Or 
I don't know. You're not going to find me out in Katy, Texas. Like I know this is one of the hottest mass plant communities, but look around and I'm like spinning. I'm like, I don't see a tree anywhere in sight. Like, I don't think God wanted trees here and they're not here. There's some random ones that they planted, but that's why I like the Northeast section. I'm from Idaho. I like the trees, although I didn't know that the allergies here are the worst things. I've never had an allergy in my life and I am dying here in Texas, slow death. And I go, guess what? Comment down below if you get these allergies in Texas and what you can do. And the comments are like, oh, local honey. Oh, this, 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 you know, it's like, so I get them engaged that way, but I, I just tell them I haven't been here, but here's exactly what you get. And then I leverage Joe, my, I'm like, he, it's Jojo. So now he goes, nobody even knows my name. It's called me Jojo. He's the real estate guru. And he's helping these hundreds of clients and he knows these builders and he knows these, these, these price points. And, and he kind of leverages it broadly of like 400s to 500s. And, you know, this exact floor plan that you're getting in here, because now we're, you know, out past Katie, you're getting it for about a hundred to $200,000 than you would in towards Cypress because of how close you are to downtown Houston. So you're going to really stretch that budget by coming out here. And that we've had a couple of clients do that lately because of this, right? So I always get him to tell the client stories. Why, hey, Joe, why did the last client move out here? Oh my gosh, they had X, Y, and Z that, you know, they, this, 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 and they, and then boom, the people watching like, that's me, right? So oh, I love that. So I want to be respectful of your time. And, but Tramisha has a question. So I just want to make sure that I respect your time. Tramisha, can, is it okay if Tramisha asks the question, Jackson? Absolutely. You can hear it. Questions I'm are my make favorite. I'm going quick, I promise. You're good. I promise I'm gonna make it quick. What if I really hate the town that I moved to? I really hate this place. Like I really, 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 really with everything in my fiber of my body. If I could leave, I would right now. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna it's gonna be hard to shoot YouTube videos about that. And so my my only and the, the good thing about me is I've traveled the country starting YouTube channels everywhere. So from mountain towns to ocean towns to big towns to small towns, I know them all. And the two things that's happened to me is it's really hard for me to talk about North Idaho, which is where I'm born and written, not Boise, not South, but North and Portland, Oregon. I left those areas and it wasn't that they're bad. I, there's a lot of things I do like, but the reasons that I'm in Houston, Texas now, and I'm here and I feel it and I love it. It, 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 it comes out in my videos. And so my business partner, Jesse, he's like iron fist. We need videos. We need leads. And I'm like, dude, I can't talk about Portland anymore. I've moved on from it, you know, and it was a great mm -hmm. place, but it's just not me anymore. I, I can't sit here. I would, the last thing I want to do is tell you, just go ahead and shoot it. If it's that hard and you don't like it, it's going to come across in the videos. Right. I, I mean, okay. I'm not going to get into your finances or nothing, but it's, it, that's something that's going to just hurt you and your business for a long time. Like, you got to get somewhere where, where you like, you know, but it's going to be tough. I'm just being brutally honest. It's just, it's, it, no, 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 it's not you. It's me. I don't, I'm from Memphis. So when we moved to Oklahoma, that was a huge change for me. Yep. Like all around. Yep. When did you move there? We moved like the year before COVID. Oh, okay. So you've been there for a while. Um, but we came like the year before COVID, and then everything shut down. So, like, I just don't know. I'm not feeling it. One thing about Tremisha, Tremisha, we can barely hear you. She is door knocking. She oh. is in the community. She is out in the communities, Jackson. So, even though she doesn't like it, she's in the, she is fearless. She would kill it on video. <laughs> and, and I, I mean, it, it, that's a tough one because when you say you hate it like the way you said that was like the depths of your soul hate you know and it's just tough like when we don't like something we don't want to talk about it and that was me with real estate like I hated it and and it made me not want to do it but you can leverage there's got to be some areas or things that you actually do like but you probably do have stories of moving there and can help people but that's one thing or or the other thing is going with more of a social media route with your Instagram and, and talking about, you know, some of your past clients talking about the market, if that's something that's a little bit more comfortable to you to talk about, you know, about these interest rates about plans. And that's one thing in Oklahoma, it's a hot market, right? And they do have a lot of new construction neighborhoods. And one thing that if you're in an area like that, you have an advantage I've found, especially like here in Houston is you can actually I don't think clients actually know that they can sell their house, which they only have a 3% interest rate, right? And they don't want to go to seven, but there's a lot of these new construction neighborhoods out here offering four, four and a half percent. So it's not that bad. You can take that equity 
get your closing costs paid for, get a four and a half percent interest rate. You're looking pretty freaking good right there. And you, you, you know, now you have the equity. These are things that you can help people with. And you might be able to talk about that in your videos locally too. But I've, I've made my, my money and, and I've built my business solely off of these relocation channels. And I lever like when I was in Portland and I was living there and I was new, it was all new to me. And I was telling stories of, of what it was like to be there and it, and it worked for me. Right. So some things just don't work for everybody all the time, but that's, those are some examples that you could use with video to, to gain some traction. Um, Thank you, Jackson. Yep. If you guys want, um, and I, I got a few more questions too. Or if you guys, Kyle says, do you have any favorite channels or podcasts for learning about the current real estate market? So you know what you're talking about. I don't listen to <laughs> real estate stuff. Um, <laughs> so I don't know which ones are best for that. Um, but for learning what I do, if you want, I have a podcast too, Channel Junkies. I do um, what I call the walk and talk. So I get a lot of these questions, just like you guys are answering to my email. And then I take that and I actually, I used to walk to the gym where I used to live and I would walk down the street and, um, you know, it's funny about this guy's true example. I used to podcast and have the microphone and the intros and the boo, woo, woo. Nobody, you guys didn't listen to it. You real estate agents never listened to it. I started doing these walk and talks because I had all these questions and all this stuff on my mind. And I would walk to the gym every day and I would answer these questions and it blew up. I now have a hundred thousand downloads on this podcast that had like maybe 5,000. And I mean, I got dump trucks going by. I saw a snake one day and I was screaming and like, I got hit by a, a, something from a weed eater. And now when I go and speak at all, these people are like, Oh my God, Tuesday's trash day. It's hilarious. And your walk and talk, they've changed my life. And the only reason I say that is because the more raw I am, the more unedited, the more you guys like it. And I've taken all my videos before on channel junkies. I've clipped them up, put them in little short form, and I put them on TikTok and Instagram. And you guys don't watch them. They don't do anything. They just sit there. But if I pop on live or if I do an actual organic video on the platform explaining something, you guys watch the shit out of it. So it's it's really just that organic um, style. So I have that podcast, the channel junkies. So um, but I don't I don't follow anything real estate market stuff. Huh? So you just go live on YouTube and just like flow. So this is that walk and talk is for my podcast channel yeah. junkies podcast and it's answering your questions i've gone live on youtube a lot for these living in channels too and yep get a lot of people on and that that's kind of a whole different can of worms but it's like you still got to leverage keywords um you got to have a couple minutes planned before people get in there and then yeah you got to really provoke them to, to ask questions but lives work really good too if, if you do it right love it all right so next question was let's see you asked the first one, right? Um, answered. I've not seen you on videos. Oh, did you just say this one? Do you always film your videos by yourself? Oh, or okay. Demetrius, yeah. Do you always film your videos by yourself or do you have someone record you? I often feel like some videos would be best if I had someone recording me. So here's the thing about having people record you. One, you got to pay a videographer to do it. And it's going to be about 1200 bucks and they're going to edit. It's going to take two weeks. It's going to be about a minute and a half of you talking about, you know, yourself. Um, I did that. That's the pain point. I, ha I had a professional video shot. And what I found out is having that camera at an arm's length and shoving it in my face, it, it brings people in, right? Like there's just something about it. When we watch anything, any kind of content out there and we see somebody like walking, it's crazy. If you've even seen ads, real estate agents get hit with ads every day. You've seen a dude like walking down the street and the camera's kind of shit, but it's like, you just kind of watch it more, right? So vlogging works best for that. And I think a lot of times when we have someone record us, we're, we're kind of a figure in the background uh, and it comes across more scripted. It's just way easier for me to, to vlog. And I have shot a ton of videos by myself, but recently I do more of the, the, the tag team with my partner, Joe. So we shoot most of these videos together. There's a lot of the aspects of that video where it is just me. And then there's aspects of just him, but um, kind of a combination style. But, you know, when I was traveling and doing a lot of these channels too, I was, you know, shooting all the videos in my studio, but just, just me. So kind of a combo of both. Love it. looks like Doug has a question, um, says Barbara, but it's Doug. 
Um, and then Kyle also has, has set up a YouTube channel. So let's see, where was Doug's? Doug? Um, he says, <laughs> um, I have some questions about coaching to my downline, as Jackson mentioned. Can, oh, can, oh, wait, who's, can you call who tomorrow, Doug? Me or, because I coach, coach a lot of people. That might be a question for me. That was probably you. Yeah. And then I don't Kyle, see the general. So Kyle has a really great channel, actually. He did the whole living. Cool. Um, do you have any favorite channels, podcasts for learning? Oh, we, you already talked about That's that. That's what I just talked about. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Looks like all the questions have been answered. Um, how can you tell us about your university for people that want to join? Yeah. Um, and oh, I, I, I have one last question about this. When people want to start, I was told if you start one of these channels, you don't want to launch it until you have like five videos or something like that. So when you launch, how many videos do you need to have to launch? And then how many per week do you recommend? And then tell us about your university. Well, that was something that I came up with years ago. And it, again, it probably gets taught by somebody. Um, I, so what happens is you're going to shoot this video for your YouTube channel. You're going to be so jacked up. You get it edited and you upload it. And then all of a sudden you're like, shit, I, I need another one for next week. Right. Um, and, and you get behind quickly. And I also have a lot of agents. They'll shoot three or four and they'll just release them all at once. Right. And they'll do three their first week. And then next week they don't have anything and they're scrambling to get these videos done. So even when they were going through my courses or my training, I started noticing this a lot and nobody was consistent. So what happens is if we have on our mind that we have to get this video out, we force a video, it's usually shorter and it's usually not as entertaining. So I like, I mean, a lot of our students, you know, we make them get at least 10 videos shot and edited and ready to go. And that's for a schedule. If you're going to do like two videos a week, now you're good for just over a month. And that's going to give you enough time to shoot one to two videos a week to stay going. I have a saying called 2010 ATS. I was getting all these messages, Jackson, I've gone through your course. It doesn't work. You suck. And I'm like, all right, I go look at their channel. They have one video about changing the mud flaps on a 69 Bronco. Another video is how to do Facebook ads for realtors. And then the third one was pros and cons of living in Georgia. And I'm like, all right, so now you have three completely different messages on one channel, right? So you're bringing in different audiences. Um, I want to see, and, and I can't help you. I need to see some videos, right? Or they would shoot one video or no videos. Hey, <laughs> can you help my channel grow? 20 videos in 10 weeks. And then I can dive into your analytics and your traffic. So it's all in my masterclass, but like exactly how to track your analytics. So what you're doing by getting a bunch of videos out there is, is gathering data, right? Now I can start going into my analytics. And I mean, I can go really deep on this stuff. And you can go to your traffic source. So what you do is you can actually see how people are finding your channel and exactly what keywords they're searching to find your channel. That way you can go all in on those. So I actually found out after a year of shooting Portland videos that one of my top drivers to my channel was Vancouver, Washington, which is a city suburb just to the north. So, and I'm talking just the river separates it. So Vancouver, Washington is actually in the Portland Metro. And that was one of the hottest relocation market. I didn't even know that until I got into my analytics and I'm like, Oh my God, I was learning. Right. So me and Jesse started shooting Vancouver videos. I mean, we, we closed tens of millions up there now, but, um, I say, you know, just starting out, if you can, I would rather see you do one good video a week rather than three crappy ones or three shorts. Don't do YouTube shorts. They're terrible. Um, and they really hurt your overall analytics. <clears throat> I go down to, I'm one, one really good video a week. Uh, instead of doing two to three just eh, videos, right? When you do those, you just kind of get a little bit of views at the beginning and they die off. If you really put a lot of effort um, into a video, it has a better chance of getting into suggested and recommended traffic, whereas where you start getting the kind of more of that virality. So starting out, I'd be consistent. Um, don't start saying, I'm going to do three a week and go down. It's too hard. I'd rather go one a week and then hey, it's getting a little easier for me. I'm going to go to two. I'm going to go to three, you know, go that route. But, but have five, 10 of them done. Like at least so when you launch it, should you have two or three videos launched? Yep. I, I would, I would have five, six. I would have, it depends. If you're going to do one video a week, I would have at least four videos shot and edited. That way you're, you're good for a month, right? If you're going, I'm doing two videos a week, I'm going to be a killer. I would have eight videos completely shot, edited and, and scheduled out. Okay. 
That means every week at the same time, two, you know, a video is going to go on maybe a Tuesday night and a Saturday morning, but for the next month, you're good. And then I would start doing my two videos every week so that I'm always ahead at least two, three, four weeks. You get COVID, you get sick, you go on vacation, you get complete burnout. I've had it more times than all of you combined. You now have videos going um, and you can take that week off and recharge. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yep. Tell us about your university. I put it in the chat. I got a free webinar, but right uh, the other link is just our original YouTube masterclass. It's, it's the original YouTube masterclass in the chat. That is exactly how to grow your YouTube channel. We've created Channel Junkie University, which is basically going to have about 17 other courses in it, like editing, um, you know, that, that what I was talking about editing. I actually do a video course in there. So um, it is actually, a, I have one just for cell phone, an entire course on how to use your cell phone, an entire course, how to use a GoPro and a just a video course so if you want to learn how to get out there and vlog or shoot studio videos or green screen videos all this that stuff's in there uh analytics mastery mindset mastery so all that stuff is in the university but if you just want the master class it's there as well so um you guys can check all that stuff out ah oh, this was so good and very very um informative and i appreciate it and thank you for just being real raw you know that's how, I mean, this, I loved this. We've had a lot of speakers on and they've been amazing, but cool. I nice to just see the, <laughs> yep. just see, just see you being you. So yep. I love it. All right, you guys. Um, thank you so much, Jackson. I'm going to record this. I'll send you the recording. So you have also all the speaker view and, and, uh, the okay. recording if you need it, cool. And if you need anything, let us know. Thank you guys. Make sure you follow him, get his book. And then check out his university. Yep. We got a Thank free Facebook you. group too. I'd love to see you guys all in there. There's a lot of agents at the same spot as you just getting going. So you can get a lot of questions answered in there too. Uh, Channel yeah, Junkies Facebook. The Facebook. Junkies. Yeah, Channel Junkies Facebook group. Channel Junkies YouTube for Real Estate Facebook group. Um, that one, that one's ours. So Channel lots of cool stuff. All right. This is amazing. Thanks, Jackson. Appreciate it. And you, bet. Uh, you guys have a great day. day. We're all going to talk about more videos, so get ready. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Jackson. See ya. Thank yep. you. Bye.